I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome back to my studio. This video is part three of my series on fold forming. If you haven't seen parts one and two, I recommend that you check them out on my channel's playlist. Here's a link for you. In this video, I call fold forging. We will learn the physics behind the forging hammer and metal, how to make a Ruger and modified Ruger fold, how to make a leaf fold, how to make a Romero fold, how to make cuff folds, and how to make single and double pleated multiple folds. You won't believe what the metal can do with the correct hammer blows. To move forward, we must talk about physics. <laughs> oh no, Greg, forget that science stuff. We want to get to the hammering and smashing metal. Don't worry, we will. If you understand the relationship between the hammer and the metal, you will be able to control the smashing. You can let nature's physics work in your favor and have a more predictable outcome to your projects. Let's look at the hammer peens and see what happens when they strike metal. A flat peen hammer will spread the molecules in all directions, not what we need here. The cross peen will spread the molecules in only two directions, allowing us to control the direction of the metal, exactly what we're looking for in this process. Now that we know how the metal reacts to hammer blows, let's see how we can control that force by using resistance and opposing force. This diagram is representing a rectangular piece of metal. The ovals here are representing the cross peen of the forging hammer, and we're only going to be forging in the lower half of this piece of metal. This is where all the force is taking place from the forging hammer. And as you know, the molecules will move in this direction and this direction equally. When we're starting to hammer on this half only, this upper half here is the resistance area and the opposing force area. Because these molecules are moving out, they kind of start pushing against this resistance area and this opposing force area, and they start moving out, but they kind of drag some of these molecules along with them and they'll start curving against that. Because this opposing force area is equal, there will be equal force pulling and curving that metal in this direction here, and it will start curving around into a perfect circle. This diagram is representing a curved piece of metal. The same thing here, we're going to be forging on the lower half of that metal, but the big difference here between this curved metal and the rectangular piece is this area here, the resistance and the opposing force area. It's different all the way along the length of the metal. So when we start forging on this and these molecules start moving out and start curving up, there's going to be less resistance here or less opposing force in these areas. And it's going to start curving and curling up much, much faster than it did with the rectangular piece. So it'll actually start curving and curling back on itself. So it's really fascinating to watch when you start forging on this. So let's take a look at both of these examples using the rectangular piece and this curved piece in real life on the metal and you'll see how that works. We'll start with our rectangular piece of metal and give it a single line fold. We want to be working on that line fold for this particular project. We also want to forge along the edge of the anvil. This will protect the edge of the anvil and our hammer because we're slightly tilting it and we don't want to put any dents in either the anvil or the hammer. Start in the middle and start forging out to the ends and you can see that we're only forging on the folded half of the metal. 
We'll leave that upper part as the resistance area. Continue forging on out to the end. We'll flip it over and do some more forging. You can see that it's starting to curve already. Those molecules are pushing out to the end and starting to curve. That forging is stretching it and curving it. We'll go ahead and anneal it. You must anneal this often because you're forging on this metal and it's really work hardening it and that metal is going through a lot of stress. So we want to remove that stress by annealing it and that will soften the metal. Don't be afraid to anneal it. You can see that the metal is really starting to come around into a full circle. Forging on that outside edge, forcing those molecules around, and there we have our nice circle. Notice the inner circle, how it has that little rippled edge to it. That's because those molecules have been forced into a smaller area and so it will have a tendency to ripple. At this point, you can go ahead and planish those nice and smooth. Before you start opening this up, you will want to anneal it. And then I like to use my knife to open up those real tight folds. And then you can go ahead and open it up with your fingers. Now watch how this gets tighter and tighter the more that you open it up. Really interesting play on the molecules here. The more you open the fold, the tighter the spiral will become. We'll make a Ruger fold to demonstrate how the curved metal reacts to the forging forces. We'll do it exactly the same way as we did with the rectangular piece, only now this metal is curved. We'll forge in the lower half of the metal on the fold edge. And you can see how this is starting to curve very, very quickly because there's less resistance in that upper part of the metal. Anneal it, of course, and we'll continue forging on that lower fold half. And you'll see how those edges are starting to really spin around and curve back on themselves simply because of less resistance in that upper half of the metal. So that metal will fold around. We're using nature to help us make this unique shape. As you can see, this is much different than our last fold that we did that was the complete circle. This is really closed in on itself. That's what really is cool about using a curved piece of metal because it will give you that nice tapered look. And again, the more you start opening this up, the more it'll curve back on itself. You can see that this is quite curly and has moved in on itself, making a unique three-dimensional form. Let's make a leaf fold. The difference between this one and the last fold that we made is we're going to be forging on the open side. We'll have a single line fold on the back, but we'll forge on those open edges. We'll forge the exact same way, trying to keep in that lower half of the metal 
And again, because it's a curved piece, it will start curving on itself. This is always fun to do when you start seeing that metal curve around and when you get to the narrower part, it will curve more. It's really fun and exciting when that happens. Now because we're going to be making a leaf shape, we don't want it to curl in totally on itself. We'll go ahead and finish forging and then anneal it and we'll be ready to open it up. Again, open it up with her knife and gives a real nice natural look when it's open. A Romero fold is a takeoff on the leaf fold except it has a double line T-fold in the back. When you open it up, there will be a little surprise on the inside. Because of that T-fold, we have that extra little fold right in the middle of that crease. A real nice little detail from that double line fold. Here's the difference between the two. Real neat little fun detail on these leaf folds. To make a cuff, you can use what you've learned in the video part one, the single line fold. Fold the metal with a single line fold and start forging on that line. It will start curving around and making a cuff shape. Just make sure that you have a piece long enough that it will go around your wrist. Simply forge on it and you'll have a cuff. You can do the same thing with a double line fold. Make it in your metal first on a straight piece and then start forging that double line fold. It will curve right around into a neat cuff shape. Same thing with your triple line fold that you learned in part one. Really neat, fun, handsome cuffs. The pleated multiple fold is really a unique fold. Start with a long rectangular piece, fold it in half, and chuck it up in the vise. Then bend the metal down, and then bend the metal back on itself. This is what keeps it even. You can flatten it with your vise or your mallet. I like to mark it so it just gives me a little guide to where I can put it into the vise. Fold it down again, fold it back onto itself, and repeat this process. Again, I just like to make a little guideline so I know where the vise is. And stick it in the vise, bend it down, bend it back on over, and continue that process to the end. Then you can flatten this whole stack of folds with the vise or the mallet. You must anneal this often. It takes a lot of force on this metal and you're going to be forging with much heavier blows than you have on any of the previous folds. Take the forging hammer and forge it again from the middle all the way out to the edge. Anneal it often. This is very important on these larger pieces and thicker pieces. You can see that it's starting to curve around. And again, I want to emphasize that you must anneal this often. After it's curved slightly, I like to go ahead and open it up with my knife. Start peeling back those layers. And then you can start opening it up with your fingers and see what happens here. Pull it out. It's like an accordion. And what a, what a dramatic shape from that flat pile of folds. This is very flexible. You'd be surprised how flexible it is, but how strong it is. You can take and start twisting the metal too and that will give it a unique shape and form. I love the inside of that fold too. It's very gorgeous, has a nice texture on it. 
many, many uses for this type of a pleated multi-fold. You can use it as a single line pleated fold, or you can make double line pleated folds first and then go ahead and stack them up. Very, very fun way of working. Fold forming is such a fascinating and creative metal smithing technique. There are so many more possibilities for innovative designs waiting for you. Try the techniques that you have learned. Creative ideas will definitely start to flow. In my next video, part four in this fold forming series, I'd like to introduce you to making fold forming cuffs and bracelets. We will use the techniques that you have learned in parts one, two, and three to make a surprising variety of cuffs and bracelets. Make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any videos in the rest of the fold forming series. By the way, the air chasing video in this series is coming soon. I'm Greg Greenwood. See you soon.